going on guys? Today we are going to continue our exploration of JavaFX and in this episode specifically we are going to go over just the basics of layout panes because they are important to get going and I'm gonna show you right off the bat why they are very important that we uh, get going with layout panes because otherwise we're gonna have very little success making any decent GUI. So if, if we make a label here and a label is just another node just like a button and it just displays text on the screen so if we say uh, this is a label whoops if I can spell um, and then we'll import the label and just like we did for the button if we actually want it to be displayed in the window we have to add it to the group so we'll add our label here and just to show you guys, so if I make the label object but I don't add it to the group, it's just going to show exactly what we had before. It's not going to know the label's supposed to be in there. But if we add the label to the group properly, we can see we do get the label successfully, but it is right on top of the button, which is obviously not what we want to happen. So in this episode, we're going to go over just the two essentially most basic layout panes. Um, which are the V box and the H box. But before we go into those, I had said in the first episode that whenever we make an instance of scene, we have to give the constructor the root group, which in this case is the G. Now that's partially true, but not completely true. So the constructor for scene, if we look, it actually shows it takes a parent object. And that might be confusing because we obviously didn't give it a parent object. This isn't we didn't write parent here, we wrote group. Group inherits from the parent class. If we look all the way down in the documentation here, we can see that group inherits from uh, the javafx.scene.parent. So just a super basic little paint diagram. We can see, so like we just said, the group inherits from parent. Also, panes inherit from parent, and panes are layout panes. So any form of a layout pane we can give here as our root parent instead of a group and it would be just fine. So for now, just to, just to get started, we're actually just going to delete this group and we're going to have a new root parent. So the first type I'm going to show you guys is the VBox. So the VBox is a type of layout pane, we'll just call it box and then we'll set it equal to new VBox. So you instantiate it just plain, just like you would a group, you don't have to give it anything in the constructor. And just like a group, since they both inherit from parent, they are both able to store nodes. So it's actually the same exact syntax to put nodes inside of a VBox as it is to put nodes inside of a group. We can say box.getChildren.add b. And this is what we had before. We had a parent or a group, in this case now it's a VBox, with the button inside it and um, like I said we're going to have to replace this G since we got rid of the group. Now we can put box in here and like we said it will be fine with this because even though it's not a group the VBox class still inherits from parent so uh, it should say that somewhere around here. Yeah here it is. It still inherits from parent so this is completely valid and so just to show you guys, if we only put one node, the button, like we had in the last episode, it's going to look exactly the same. There is no difference between using a VBox and a group. The difference comes when we put another node. So now, just like we did with the label before when we put it in the group, let's see what happens when we put the label inside of the VBox. So before what happened was that they went directly on top of each other. This time they are displayed in a vertical order so the button comes first and then below the button is the label and they're not overlapping at all which is exactly what we want and also just to let you guys know um, this isn't too important but in the constructor for VBox you can actually give it a number and it will make the spacing between each node that it lays out equal to that number so it's hard to tell, but this is actually a 10 pixel gap between the bottom of the button and the top of the label. So that's that's not that important, but just a little side note if you guys want to use that. And so so the way this works is that we, we could manually achieve the same effect by we could make a group 
um, or, or we could just specifically actually we could make a group but let's look at it this way we can say B so our button dot set layout X and then we can give it a specific value we can do the same for B dot set layout Y and we can do this manually and put the exact coordinates um, as double values that we want to see our nodes on the screen and we can achieve the same effect as this but it's much easier just to say okay here VBox you take our nodes and put them in a vertical order and all the work is taken care uh, taken care by the VBox itself instead of us having to manually go and choose the values and figure out exactly how to do it and so I guess now we can move on to the H box, which is pretty similar. If you guys couldn't tell, um, V stands for vertical, H stands for horizontal. So I'm sure you can kind of predict what this is going to do. So if we change this box to be an H box, now if we run our program, it puts them side by side. It'll put them in a horizontal order. And in general, it, it does matter the order that you put in your nodes. So since we put in the button first and then the label, it displays the button and then the label but if we were to switch this around and put it like this then we can see that it puts the label first then the button so that's pretty much the basics of H boxes or not of H boxes that's the basics of layout panes in general um, H box and V box do tend to be some of the much more basic ones there are there are a lot of in-depth ones there are like they have uh, what's it called? They have border panes. They have scroll panes. They have grid panes. Um, what's it called? H box and V box are actually pretty much the only type of layout panes that don't actually have the word pane in them. There's probably some others that I'm forgetting, but most of them will. But these are the most basic ones, so you can create a lot of cool effects just by combining H boxes and V boxes together. And the last important thing we're going to note before ending this episode is that just like in the first episode, I said you can put groups inside of groups. Well, you can put V boxes and H boxes inside of other V boxes and H boxes because anything that inherits from parent, so since a group inherits from parent, you can put other parents inside of it. And you can do the same thing with pain. So if I have one pain, I can put three more panes inside of it. I can put as many as I want. So just to give a super quick example of that, so I have this H box with a label in it. Let's say I make a, uh, let's actually here, let's do this. Let's change this to a V box. Then we are going to, let's say we make, um, I don't know, we'll make like three more labels, okay? We'll call them label one, two, and three, and sure, they'll all say this is a label, I guess. Um, and what we're going to do is, so this will be um, one of our essentially parent um, children. So you'll see what I mean by that in a second, but even though a V-Box is a parent, we're going to treat this as a child, and we're going to make another, um, we're, we'll actually make an H-Box here, we'll call it hbox equals new hbox and got to be careful with this stuff and then we're gonna make one more vbox and I'll explain all this in a second uh, just try to follow along for now um, and what we're gonna do here is in this second vbox we are going to put let's say um, get children and just to let you guys know, there is actually, when you say dot add, you can give it one node. There's another method called add all, where you can give it as many nodes as you want, and it'll add them all at the same time. So it's pretty simple. So now that we have all of those nodes in this VBox, what we can do is we can take this HBox. So think of it, um, if we think of it in terms of how it's going to look, if we get rid of all of this stuff, uh, yeah. Um, so we're gonna have here's our window we have we're gonna have um, an overall H box so we're gonna have one H box that's gonna put our what or whatever is inside of it horizontally and then we're gonna have two V boxes so if we add our two V boxes to the overall H box it's gonna store the first one here and then the second one right next to it so if we look at that 
in the code, what we can do here is we can say hbox dot get children dot add all again because we're adding more than one thing. And first, we're going to add the box, which is the first uh, box we made that has the original button and the label. And then we'll add the hbox, which has or I'm sorry, the other VBox we made, which has these three. And so if we do that, then, and then since um, you always want to put your most high level parent, or most high up parent that contains everything else as your root node for the scene. So here we're going to replace this with the HBox, since that's what's storing our two VBoxes. Hopefully this is making sense. And now if we finally press run here, we can see it puts the first V box on the left, which is our label, this label and the button, and then the second V box on the right. So this idea of combining parents within each other is very important. It's actually very rare that a uh, GUI has just one parent that contains all of the nodes like we did in the last episode where we just had a group that directly contained the button. It's much more common that you'll have a bunch of groups which contain different groups of nodes and you'll put them all in a more encompassing um, higher up group or something of that nature. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing. Um, we'll go over more layout panes as we move forward in the future. But for now, hope you guys learned something again, and I will see you guys next episode.